Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Saturday, May 27th, 2023. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's Word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Our sins are serious before God, so serious that it is utterly impossible for us to be able to save ourselves. That is why it was necessary for God himself to act. He needed to come and do what was necessary so that we might be saved from our sins. Isaiah talks about this theme in our reading for today from Isaiah chapter 59. Indeed, the Lord's arm is not too weak to save, and his ear is not too deaf to hear. But your iniquities are separating you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not listen. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies and your tongues mutter injustice. No one makes claims justly. No one pleads honestly. They trust in empty and worthless words. They conceive trouble and give birth to iniquity. They hatch vipers' eggs and weave spiders' webs. Whoever eats their eggs will die. Crack one open and a viper is hatched. Their webs cannot become clothing and they cannot cover themselves with their works. Their works are sinful works and violent acts are in their hands. Their feet run after evil and they rush to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are sinful thoughts. Ruin and wretchedness are in their paths. They have not known the path of peace. There is no justice in their ways. They have made their roads crooked. No one who walks on them will know peace. Therefore, justice is far from us and righteousness does not reach us. We hope for light, but there is darkness. For brightness, but we live in the night. We grope along a wall like the blind. We grope like those without eyes. We stumble at noon as though it were twilight. We are like the dead among those who are healthy. We all growl like bears and moan like doves. We hope for justice, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far from us. For our transgressions have multiplied before you and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and we know our iniquities. Transgression and deception against the Lord, turning away from following our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering lying words from the heart. Justice is turned back, and righteousness stands far off. For truth has stumbled in the public square, and honesty cannot enter. Truth is missing, and whoever turns from evil is plundered. The Lord saw that there was no justice, and he was offended. He saw that there was no man. He was amazed that there was no one interceding. So his own arm brought salvation, and his own righteousness supported him. He put on righteousness as body armor and a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on garments of vengeance for clothing and he wrapped himself in zeal as in a cloak. So he will repay according to their deeds, fury to his enemies, retribution to his foes, and he will repay the coasts and islands. They will fear the name of the Lord in the west and his glory in the east, for he will come like a rushing stream driven by the wind of the Lord. The Redeemer will come to Zion, and to those in Jacob who turn from transgression, this is the Lord's declaration. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit who is on you and my words that I have put in your mouth will not depart from your mouth or from the mouths of your children or from the mouths of your children's children. From now on and forever, says the Lord. As we move back into the Gospel of Matthew, we turn to chapter 7, and we hear the conclusion of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Do not judge so that you won't be judged. 
for you will be judged by the same standard with which you judge others, and you will be measured by the same measure you use. Why do you look at the splinter in your brother's eye, but don't notice the beam of wood in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the splinter out of your eye, and look, there's a beam of wood in your own eye? Hypocrite. First, take the beam of wood out of your eye, and then you will see clearly to take the splinter out of your brother's eye. Don't give what is holy to dogs or toss your pearls before pigs, or they will trample them under their feet, turn and tear you to pieces. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Who among you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you want others to do for you, do also the same for them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who go through it. How narrow is the gate and difficult the road that leads to life, and few find it. Be on your guard against false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravaging wolves. You'll recognize them by their fruit. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? In the same way, every good tree produces good fruit, but a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit. Neither can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that doesn't produce good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire, so you'll recognize them by their fruit. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in, in your name, drive out demons in your name, and do many miracles in your name? Then I will announce to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you lawbreakers. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell, the rivers rose, and the winds blew and pounded that house. Yet it didn't collapse, because its foundation was on rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and doesn't act on them will, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, the rivers rose, the winds blew, and pounded that house and it collapsed. It collapsed with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, because he was teaching them like one who had authority, and not like their scribes. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.